Okay, we haven't done this in a long time, and now this is my own YouTube channel, so we're kind of starting from scratch, but I did want to show a couple um, really amazing things that have happened with intacting, uh, and how this is going to be game changer for some of the things that we've been using other tools for, and how you can manage everything right with intacting now. So I'm excited to show you, stay tuned, and let's dive right in. So you can see right here uh, with intacting, I have just uh, a normal, uh, and I'm in edit mode, let me get out of edit mode. But you can see I have just a normal um, sequence right here. Let me go ahead and refresh. This is uh, just a test project that I've been uh, working in. And so you can see I have my 11 different areas. They're numbered zero through 10. So yes, that is 11. And right here, if we pull down, we can see this is what we're going to be building. Pretty amazing, right? <laughs> so I just wanted to showcase some different things. Uh, obviously, the milestones, I did a milestone um, video um, when I was uh, at Lean Tact, but this this is going to be uh, even, you know, kind of showing some of the how to use it and why that's going to be um, amazing for us within tacting and having different phases and multi multi project and all the great stuff that has happened since I did um, the first couple videos there. So um, as we have milestones turned on, as you can see, uh, um, when they're turned on, you see train or phase milestones here and project milestones here. So if you have multiple phases together, multiple sequences together that you have um, uh, let's say that this obviously says data centers. So if you have, um, if you have, uh, well, I don't have structure turned on. So anyway, if you have data center uh, work within the data hall, and then maybe some other type work that is similar, but, but different, uh, might have some of the same work packages, but really not the same sequence, so on and so forth. You can have that other train added down here. And uh, you can do that just by going here and clicking and uploading, let's say that it's this, right? And that uploads right here. And then you obviously have that. You'd also have this. So that's how you could have the, the other phase there. But um, let's just focus on the singular phase here. And obviously we have a milestone. So this is all HVAC is CX and working. Everything's up and uh, running. That's what this last work package here in this in this final wagon is representing. Now I went through and I wanted I uh, told it to add the type um, that I clicked on and I can go here and I could say, OK, this milestone is represented by the green. It might also be um, uh, better represent represented that it's by the white. This last area's um, work package here, this white one, the functional checklist is complete, right? And if that was the case, um, I can hit add milestone. And now I have both. I have this one, which represents all of these being complete, no matter if they change order, or this one, HV, which is the HVAC functional checklist in the last area is complete. So that's why you see that one is right there. Now, both of those are um, targeted right here. Now let's look at it from a actual standpoint of the entire project. So from a project phase perspective, we have our milestone, which is data center needs to be complete by this time frame. We also have our data hall or data center, whose last activity is all HVAC uh, is commissioned and working, right? So let's say that one of these pushed because these are linked to the data center being complete. If I go here and I go to edit, link milestone to HVAC checklist and HVAC complete working. So those are linked to this overall milestone, these train milestones or these phase milestones, meaning this act, these activities need to be complete in order to complete this. What happens if one of these push, right? So if I go in here 
and I grab this and I pull it out to there, right? And I apply it to all 10 um, phases. And actually, let me go one more because it needs to be one more. Yep. Boop. You see this little thing up here saying that, oh, there's a problem with this. We're not going to hit the milestone. We're already projecting, even though we're back in here and we know this work is pushed out, that's going to be a problem that's not going to fall within the, the milestone. So we can come in here and we can see, okay, well, what if I close this milestone and I grab this and I put it back with that work package? I see, yeah, it's applied to all 10. That happens, now we see that we're back on track, right? Because this milestone slides back. So these are dynamic, meaning if this pushes out and we're having problems, these automatically update our project milestone. So we have project overall milestones and we have train milestones, and those work in unison together. Now, what if we had something that was outside that didn't follow this flow or maybe something inside the building, whatever, those are the backlog. So backlog has just been added this week. Backlogs are super fun. I'll show you how to create one, super simple. Hit the plus button and it creates a group and a line. Let's go ahead and put non-flow or non-packed areas. And let's call this the, the, the dumpster enclosure. Well, let's add in some, some stuff for the dumpster enclosure. You can come in here and you can load all of your own work packages or the company's work package or the community's work packages. Um, so in here, we're gonna be adding, and I know the first thing that we're gonna be doing is footings. Yep, and then it says, wait, what date do you wanna do it on? Well, I know we're gonna start that on the 26th and that's that. So if I come back here, you see, that's when we're doing this activity. Well, really, you can come in here and say, well, it's gonna be a little bit longer than that. And actually, I do wanna push this out to where it needs to be. It is gonna be on November the 24th. That's when the footings are gonna be happening. Well, right after that, we're gonna come in and we're gonna be doing the backfill. Add that in. Let me just put it in order here. So if I put in the backfill, then the CMU wall, then we're gonna be installing bollards, add, and then we're going to be installing the gate. Yep. So that's our general sequence of activities, but that's actually not how we're gonna build it. We're gonna be doing the footings while we backfill and then we'll, then we'll finish backfilling. Once backfill is complete, then we're gonna do our, where's that? Um, so we have about three weeks of CMU and bollards can go during that time and that's fine, but the gate needs to come after the CMU is set 100%. And actually, bollards are going to be back over in here. So that's actually what it's going to look like. And that's going to be our sequence for our dumpster enclosure. And so that is one of our backlog areas, non-tacted areas. And then you can add more in here if you have the dumpster enclosure. And then you might have, um, uh, you know, something else, whatever other area or singular location. There might be... Um, a little closet in the kitchen that you have to, you know, do some AV work or so, I don't know, whatever, AV room, right? And then you can see within the AV room, we can add our work packages, right? And, and do whatever we need to for that in there. And then you can open this up and then you can see your AV room, your dumpster for your backlog areas. And that's what that would look like. Let's just go ahead and throw just a random work package in there so you can see what that looks like. So now you can see, and let's say it's gonna take a long time, right? So there's that. That's what those look like. So these are our backlogs. A little, you can keep track of these a little bit separate. And then as you click down in here, it'll bring up, you know, your actual backlog, which is the AV room and then your sequence of activities. You can also bring up your dumpster enclosure, footing, backfill, CMU, wall, ballers, gate, and, and show your dates, or see it in the time scale down here. You can come in here and just like the other things, you can keep track of steps to make sure that those are done prior and then those would have actual steps beforehand as much as you need. Keep the log, pictures, all the same stuff for your backlog activities, just like you would for activities within your actual flow. So that's how backlog works. Really, really great little, um, 
little addition to tacting. Uh, it obviously is, is uh, you know, a first rendition of how to add uh, backlogs in the non-flow areas. Another way that you could use this is, um, you know, coming in here and adding in actual work uh, that it is, let's say it is a, an area that is either last or a non-important one, one that doesn't, you know, dictate an early turnover or something, and we really do call this backlog area, right? We have a defined backlog area, or we'll call this backlog work. And we identify that is, you know, EL area two or whatever it is, right? And in this area, we have our MA1 that goes, and then you can set a date, let's do it on the 26th. And actually, it's gonna be after everything, it's gonna be all the way over here. It's gonna be that much time to finish that area's amount of that work. So as we flow from space to space to space to space, we have this backlog work we need to get to at the end, um, which we can put here to show that we'll come back to it. Or if we have a problem here, one of these areas, we can drop down and we can start working in here while we coordinate that and then get back on track. Same thing if in the same space, we had uh, SO1, add, and I pull back to right there. Now you see that SO1 is right there. Oops, I wanna go one more wagon. SO1 is right there and then when they're done, they're gonna come down and do this work. But if any time in, in the process there's a problem, we can go and do this backlog work if needed. So you can see that as uh, a backlog area. So um, that is what it looks like. And then you have two backlog areas here, one backlog area. So it just kind of keeps track of how many of these you have created. So we flow where we can and we, we do these little one-offs. This should be used very sparingly, in my opinion. This, a lot of, uh, a lot of the work um, and it depends by what project type, but a lot of the work should fit within your actual flow. And this is just for your one-off and backlog work. So I hope that you can see that and how that works. And I hope that this is helpful to you. I'm gonna be doing more of these tacting videos, so stay tuned. We're gonna do more here on this channel and really just help to spread some of these tools and how they work uh, so that you can use them on your project. Thanks. We will talk to you guys on the next one. Bye.